God bless you. Thank you so very much for joining us. Thank you so much for giving us some of your time today. We know how precious time is. And we just want to say, God bless you all. Thank you so very much. Thanks so much to everyone who's decided to come on out and serve the Lord with us today. It's another great day to serve the Lord on another great day that he has created. Amen. So I want everyone just to go right ahead and just send a big fat heart emoji. My my five-year-old daughter has been doing this with me just a whole lot. She's just been doing like, mommy, mommy, come here, give me your forehead. And she makes a heart with her little hands <laughs> and she puts it on my forehead. And I just feel like, oh my gosh, she's giving me her heart. So I want you guys to just put up a big fat emoji, heart emoji. Uh, and that's just us sending love. It's like from me to you, from you to me, I receive it and I hope you receive it back because it is a beautiful day. Just to say, I love you to, you know, brothers and sisters in the body of Christ. We love you wherever you are watching us from, wherever you're joining us from. We love you. We are going places with Jesus ministries. And you have joined us for our Sunday devotion, our Sunday morning worship service, where we uh, just live and breathe to exalt the name of Christ. We're just a group of Jesus Christ loving folk. And we want to share that with you and take you along for the experience so that you can form a relationship with Christ as well. Okay. Saying about religion, it ain't about denomination. Because at the end of the day, on the day of judgment, you can't take your denomination before Christ. Okay. You cannot take your religion before Christ. It's just going to be you and God alone in that moment. So we help you as a ministry to form a greater, stronger relationship with Jesus Christ, because he is, he alone is your Lord and savior. Okay. All right. So I am full of real joy this morning. Can I just say that? I'm full of real joy this morning. Not that fake fluff stuff that the world is full of and the world sells, but the real joy. The joy that comes from the Lord, the joy of the Lord that gives us strength, according to Nehemiah 8, verse 10. I want y'all to write that down or somebody put it in the comment right here. Let me see who's paying attention. Put it in the comment. Nehemiah 8, verse 10. Okay. The joy of the Lord is our strength. And I'm going to go ahead and read it just so we can get warmed up. This is what we do here at Going Places with Jesus Ministry. Every single thing we do is rooted in the word of God. We don't make a step if it's not in the word of God, okay? Nehemiah 8 verse 10 says, then he said to them, go your way, eat the fat, drink the sweet, and send portions to those of whom nothing is prepared. For this day is holy to our Lord. Do not have sorrow for the joy of the Lord is your strength. It was a moment of encouragement for Nehemiah and the, the people who were building, rebuilding the wall. They had gotten worn down. Some of them had gotten tired. Some of them were wondering, does this even make sense? And so Ezra decided with the Levites to gather the book. Okay, and start reading from the book. Why? Because the word of God is our only encouragement. It is the only thing that will refuel us when we feel like we're running on empty. Okay, so I want you to take that and let that be your guiding, one of your guiding Bible verses for this week. Okay, a challenge. Nehemiah 8, verse 10 The joy of the Lord is your strength. It is your strength. Okay, let nothing deter you from that truth. The joy of the Lord is your strength. The psalmist said in Psalms 27, one, and I'm just going to take this little part out of it. It is such a beautiful and powerful Psalm that it says, the Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Who can, who should we be afraid of? Right? Because the Lord is the strength of our life. The joy of the Lord is the strength. It is our strength. Okay. So let us move forward, move forward mightily in praise 
move forward mightily in worship, move forward mightily in adoration of God and doing for God what he has called us to do. Why? Because the joy of the Lord is our strength, okay? It's not about fame. It's not about likes. It's not about numbers. It's not about views. It is just to proclaim the simple truth, these very simple truths that God has put in his book for us all to read. And so, Lord, as we present ourselves today, we present ourselves, God, surrendered and humble this morning. We set aside haughtiness, God. We set aside a puffed up ego today, almighty God. Our hearts are surrendered, oh God, unto you. Our minds are surrendered. Our spirits surrendered to you, Lord. Lord, we ask that you use us today. Use us today only for your glory so that you be lifted up and so that you be magnified. God, we seek no recognition, but that all men will surrender to you and exalt your holy name. Lord, use us, O oh God, to build your church that lost souls may run into you. God, this is our heart's desire. This is our heart cry unto you, God. Oh, we give thanks to the Lord. Psalms 118 and 1 through 9 says, we give thanks to the Lord for he is good, for your mercy endure forever. We say your mercy endure forever, God. We now say your mercy endure forever. Lord, we fear you. So we say your mercy endures forever. We have called on you, God, in our distress. You answered us and you set us on a broad place, God. Lord, you are on our side. We will not fear. What can men do to us, God? Lord, you are for us, almighty God. Lord, is, the Lord is for us among those who help us. Our trust is in the Lord. We place no confidence in man. It is better, your word says, God, to trust in you, Lord, than to put confidence in princes. And God, we trust you this morning. We make an open declaration, God, that we trust you. Our hope and our faith is in you, God. It is not in riches. It is not in wealth. No, God. Oh, God, we enter into your gates with thanksgiving and into your courts with praise. God, we are thankful. Lord, we bless your name. God, we are grateful. Lord, we are humbled. Lord, we are surrendered. Lord, we seek to exalt your name, God. We declare your holiness, oh, God, in the land. We declare your holiness, almighty God, in the land. Your righteousness, almighty God. Father, we thank you for upholding us with your mighty right hand. We thank you, God, for your sovereignty. We thank you, God, for your majesty. We thank you, God, that your compassions fail not. We thank you, God, that you are altogether good. You are altogether worthy. You are altogether mighty. You are altogether holy. Lord, we exalt you. We exalt you, God. My God, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. The whole world is full of your glory, God. It is full of your glory, God. It is full of your majesty, God. My God, my God, we praise you, God. Out of the abundance of our hearts, our mouth speak, God. Out of the abundance of our heart, our mouth speak, God. Lord God, my God, your praise is inside of us, God. Your praise is flowing out of us, God. Not only through our mouth, God, but through our hearts, God, or through our spirit, God. We praise you. We worship you, God. We adore you, Abba. We look up and we cry out, God. Abba, Father, we bless you. Abba, Father, we honor you. Abba, Father, we glorify you, God. Let your name be lifted on high, God. We, even if we get no recognition, God, let us die knowing that we exalted the name of the most high, God. For you are king of kings, God. You are Lord of lords, God. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, holy God, righteous God, sovereign God. You, sir, God bless you. The word of God, God is you. already blessed. Amen. Hallelujah. God bless you, Evangelist Sidoni. God is a good God. God is worthy to be praised. There is no one like our God. Amen. The key word today, saints of God, is focused. 
my God, focus. You have eyesight. You have perfect focus. We all have perfect focus. Well, we say we have perfect focus, but are we focused on the right thing? There's something that we're focused on. Amen. But the question is, is it the right thing that you're focused on? We're focused on something, but are we focused on the right thing? We can go through this entire life wasting time focusing on things that are contrary. That's not the will of God. That's not the purpose. Everything pertaining to our lives, it is purpose. It is purposeful. Anyone connected to our lives, it is because of purpose. Anyone in our job, it has a purpose. You're there on that job for a purpose. There's a reason why you're there. You're married to that purpose, to that individual because of a purpose. Anytime purpose is removed, then that or whatever is of, it's, it's, it's just irrelevant. Immediately becomes irrelevant. Why? Because purpose, you being on that job is purposeful. Come on, somebody. The Bible says we, we're getting, I'm going, I'm getting right into it. Amen. Because uh, evangelist Adoni put us on a high. So we're going to flow in the name of Jesus. Somebody say hallelujah. Glory be to God. Uh, we've mastered focus, but we're focused on the wrong thing. The Bible says that Peter, he lost his focus because the Bible says contrary winds had begun to blow. The Bible says Jesus was praying. He was not, not even there. He was minding his business and he was praying, seek, seeking the face of God. And I, we can say God, Jesus sensed something that something was wrong because his disciples were out at the sea, but he didn't sense it. He knew it. <laughs> Jesus is beyond senses, all right? Jesus knew that something was not right. So immediately he, let, he stopped praying, left where he was, and he went out into the sea. Aren't you grateful that God, when we lose our focus, when contrary winds come and it blows that Jesus is not just merely on the way, he's a very present help in the time of trouble because Jesus is a spirit, he's not flesh, where he has to walk there or, or move there. He's not like Satan, or Satan, he has to go here and there. The Bible says he, was to he told God, I'm to and fro here and there in the earth, amen. So that means he's not uh, here, there, and everywhere like God. God can be at all places all at the same time. Jesus left where he was, and the Bible says he walked on the sea. Amen. But the Bible, as a matter of fact, it says it says it here in uh actually I'll share it to you in a second, but it says here in the 27th verse, but straightway Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer. It is I, be not afraid. So we cannot be afraid. Somebody say, be not afraid. Regardless of the contrariness that we see, regardless of what is happening, we cannot be afraid and we cannot lose our focus. 28th verse says, and Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. And he said, come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid and beginning to sink. He cried saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? If this had to have a topic, this would be the anatomy of focus. Write that down, the anatomy of focus. The anatomy of focus. Because we it's, not a, it's not a matter of if. We have to have focus. You know, the, re the reality is, you can lose your focus. As a pastor, I can lose my focus. A pastor just, he just committed suicide this week. As a pastor, we say to ourselves, how in the world did he commit suicide? Why did he commit suicide? He could have been overwhelmed. We don't know what it is, but pastors can be overwhelmed, right? And I'm like, my God, Lord have mercy. We have to pray for pastors. God strengthen pastors, keep us, sustain pastors. Why? Because pastors are under pressure, especially kingdom-focused pastors, pastors who are in, in, on the front line. Come on, somebody. You can lose your focus that way and say, my like, God, I, I, I might as well quit too. I might as well give up. You can be an entrepreneur. Listen now, a business person. And you, you I heard this week, a witch sold millions and millions of dollars of conjuring candles. 
and became a millionaire overnight, a millionaire overnight. And you, you started your business. You're a child of the king. Amen. And you're doing everything you can to make your focus, excuse me, to cause your business to thrive. And you're not even a millionaire. And this woman is selling conjuring candles and becomes a millionaire overnight. That can cause you to lose your focus. Can we keep it real, saints of God? There are so many different reasons as to why we can lose our focus. Psalms 37 says, fret not thyself because of evil do. Because, excuse me, because of evildoers, for they soon will be cut off. Amen. So we can't focus on the world system, the way that they do things. Come on, somebody. Why? Because if we lose our focus, amen, we will not be able to fulfill and accomplish what God has for us to accomplish. When we look at just the eye, the eye, the cornea, if, you know, if the, the, the eye alone has a cornea, it has a pupil, it has an iris, we don't ha even have time, it has a lens, it has a retina, Lord have mercy, it has an optic nerve, it has the ability to, to, to release tears, it has tear ducts, there's so many components just within the eye, and as I said earlier, it's not that we don't have 2020, some of us have 2020 focused but the enemy's focus is not our eyes. Do you know that if the eyes have the ability to do all of these different things, but it can't work without the brain? It can't work without the brain. As perfect as a person's focus may be, the moment the brain stops, that perfect vision stops. So the enemy's plan is beyond just eyes. His, his plan is what? Our mind, our imagination, his focus. If I can get them to the I feel the glory of, I feel the kabod of God. Oh, my day, shitiki. Let me tell you something. The enemy's plan is to cause us to lose focus, how? By giving us shiny object syndrome. He just wants us to see a shiny object. Once that object is shiny, if it's shiny enough, then we lose focus on our purpose. We lose focus on our assignment. We lose focus on our identity of who we are in the kingdom of God. We begin to focus on ourselves and what we want, because let's be real, the majority of, of the things that we want is self-centered. Let's keep it real. Let's, let's keep it real. Very few people are focused on not only me, but the whole world. No, the Bible says in the book of Isaiah, he could not even find an intercessor to stand in the gap to pray on behalf of the people. Do you realize that even an intercessor, the enemy's focus is to get us to what? lose our focus and say, well, our praying is in vain, uh, in vain. Everything that we do is in vain. My God, this church has thousands of people and we only got a couple people. But my God, let me tell you something. We are a, we are a kingdom focused church and I got a look, I got a testimony this week because of last week's prayer. Sometimes I wonder, are we doing anything? I don't know about you, but I'm doing something. Oh my God. I don't know about you. You can think that you're not doing nothing, but I am doing something for the kingdom of God. Somebody lift your hands and give God praise if you got the faith to do it. <laughs> Glory be to God. You may feel like, no, I'm not, do I'm not doing anything. No, no. I was just amazed at the testimony that this woman of God was so blessed. I'm not saying names, but this individual was so blessed and experienced a mighty move of God because of last week's prayer. And sometimes you want to, my prayer is in vain. No, it's not in vain. The devil is a cussed liar. He can go to hell in the name of Jesus. What do you mean our th my Thursday night prayers is in vain? Are you kidding me? 
If intercessors stop praying, do you realize the judgment that will be unleashed in the earth? If the righteous do not stand, the Bible says, what shall the ungodly do? The ungodly are in trouble. That's what the Bible says. They're in, the witch is in trouble if there ain't nobody praying on that street. There will be no mercy or unleashed. Lift up your hands and give God some glory in this place. We rebuke the shiny object, object syndrome in the name of Jesus. The Bible says in 1 Peter 1.13, so prepare your minds for action. Be completely sober in spirit, steadfast, self-disciplined, spiritually and morally alert. Fix your hope completely on the grace of God that is coming to you when Christ is revealed. Somebody lift your hands in this place. Give God some glory. Losing our focus. Yes, it happened to Samson. He lost his focus. David, he lost his focus. His eyes was focused on the wrong thing. He was focused on that female. Come on, somebody. Instead of being focused on war, he should have went out to battle. But he was behind told the soldiers to shut up I feel pushed back but the Lord rebuke every demonic spirit that's trying to block and hinder this I rebuke it in the name of Jesus I got the authority I bind and crush every plan of the enemy every demonic assignment in the name of Jesus see as a man of God as servants of God who are on the front line we always got to experience pushback left right and center all around us behind us north west south east that's why we got to be full of the holy ghost full of the holy spirit lift your hands and give god praise show shake Yes, so Samson, he was he lost his focus. We read in our Bible, Martha lost her focus. She was so uh, busy with busyness. <laughs> Jesus told her, you're so busy with this. You're so busy with, with, with your husband, so busy with your job, so busy with your career, so busy and focused on things and that and this and that. Come on. And Jesus said, no, I'm not. I'm going to leave her alone. I'm going to leave Mary alone. What? God, she, cause, but she understands that she needs to be focused on me. Oh, my day, shata kadabu, shikidi. Oh, my God. Samson lost his focus. David lost his focus. We see in the Bible, Eve lost her focus. Y'all remember Eve? You know who else lost his focus? Lucifer. Saints of God, the place we're, stri we're striving to be, which is heaven. Satan lost his focus in heaven. In heaven. He lost his focus. And the Jehovah, Jireh, the king of kings, Shoto. The four and twenty elders who bow before God, cast their crowns and worship Jehovah Jireh in the presence of the Almighty God. This idiot lost his focus. Where we're trying to get to, he was there and he lost his focus. You know what he's trying to do now? His main goal now, while he's down here, is to get the people of God to lose their focus. So many people will never see what he saw. And as a matter of fact, the Bible says that God, Jesus said, he is remodeling heaven. He's building mansions, Jesus said. I go to prepare a place for you. I'm going to prepare a place for you Satan never saw before. He saw some things, but where I'm preparing for us, he never saw it. He never been there. He shot up. Oh my God. He never saw it and will never see it. Brook 
soto. So get your focus back. Because we don't got much time here on the earth. Lift your hands and give God glory. I, my God, if you don't feel the glory of God, you are spiritually dead. <laughs> and you better repent right now because the presence of the Lord is clearly evident in this place. So where people say heaven is my goal, heaven is not my goal. Jesus is my goal. A lot of people say heaven is their goal, but they ain't going there. Why? Because they pushed out Jesus. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. How in the world heaven is your goal when you reject the truth, you reject the life, you reject Jesus Christ. Jesus said, I am the door. Unless you go through me, you cannot enter in. You can't sneak in through no side window. You can't sneak in. Jesus said it. You can't. The Bible says there are three gates to the east, three gates, gates to the north, three gates to the south, three gates to the west. That means there are 12 gates to the city. And we cannot enter in by... Lord have mercy. The Bible said Jesus went to the gate himself and he almost couldn't get in. Even the angel said, who is the king of glory? Jesus had to respond, the Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. Lift up he gates. The everlasting doors and let the king of glory come in. I need to get in there now. So when people think, oh, they're going to they're gonna get in here with this diluted gospel. They're going to get in here and get into heaven and push Satan out. They're going to get in here with their own agenda and push out God's agenda. They're going to get in there and do what they want and flowing in their flesh and not in the spirit. When God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. They not going to get in, y'all. So guess what? If Jesus had a little difficult time getting in, it was just real quick. Because they asked him two times, who are you? Read it for yourself. It's in the book of Psalms. You think the first time they would have let him in. Who are you? He had to respond again. Jesus is the way. He is the truth. He is the life. You know who our focus is? Forgetting those things which are behind. And reaching towards those things which are before. I press towards the mark. It's a mark for the prize. Prize of the higher calling of God. Who? 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 In Christ. Jesus, <laughs> you know who our prize is? My prize is not this and that. Guess what? I want to be blessed. I want to experience a lot of things. God has blessed me in many ways. Come on, somebody. And God is going to bless me even the more in the name of he's going to bless us even the more. But still, whether we got money in the bank or money is low or we come on, we, we're blown up with finances. Our focus still needs to be on the Lord Jesus Christ. Because look at the stock market now. People are shocked. The stock market has plummeted. <laughs> Crypto has plummeted. So many things are happening in our world. Europe doesn't. Need, Europe right now is wondering if their current leader needs to be the leader. There's upheaval everywhere, all around us. If you don't believe me, watch BBC. They tell the truth and they reveal everything. They expose everything. I don't even watch regular news anymore because I need the truth. I don't need your agenda. I need truth. What is really going on? So by saints of God, we have lost our focus. But we say in the name of Jesus, we get off. I'm getting, I don't know about you. I'm getting my focus back. In the face of likes and dislikes, 
You better know, your, you better have your focus. Come on, somebody. Whether they give your thumbs up or give your thumbs down, I focus. If they give you a thumbs down or give you more, give you another thumbs down and call their friends and tell you need to give her a thumbs down, give him a thumbs down. You better keep your focus. Why? Because your thumbs down don't matter to me. Your thumbs up don't even matter to me. Why? Because I have a focus and my focus is the Lord Jesus and the assignment he has given to me before the foundation of the world. My God, you, your mother, oh, shata, you think you became an evangelist just now? The Bible says in the book of Jeremiah, before I formed you in your mother's womb, I ordained you a prophet, Pastor Cindy. I ordained you an intercessor, Minister Chana. I ordained you an evangelist, evangelist Sadoni. I ordained you a pastor, Pastor Sotabokonde, Pastor Andrew, before the foundation of the world, I ordained you, oh, so that you will show forth my glory in the earth realm. I am more than concrete. I'm more than a house. I'm more than a spouse. I am God. I am God. I hear the Lord say, serve me with gladness. Come before me. With singing and know he that the Lord, he is good. I will no longer lose my focus. I am focused. My God, whatever it takes. If You know, sometimes they got to put those little side blinders on horses so that when they run, they're focused forward. Come on, somebody. If God has got to put some side, come on, some side views so that we can see Come on, you know, peripheral vision is beautiful, but peripheral vision can be a distraction as well. And anybody in that car can't be distracting you on your journey because they can cause an accident. My kids, if they're making too much, come on, you know what I'm talking about. If you're driving, the kids are making too much noise and you're focused on keeping everybody safe. You, what's the first thing you want to say? Quiet down, y'all. Come on, somebody. Why? Because your mind can easily lose, can be, excuse me, can be distracted. And when your mind is has lost focus, your eyes have automatically lost focus. One of the, re I realize, there's some things that God has ha had to deal with me. I tell you, there's some th there are times where God has to deal with us. Come on, somebody. There will be times where God is going to deal with us. As a matter of fact, before we even pray, <laughs> before we even ask anything, you know how many times I go in God's presence and the first thing he wants to deal with is me. What's going on inside of you? Yeah, I know you believe in God. You told me this already. I know about that. I know about this. I know about that. But what's going on with you? <laughs> what's going on with you? Come on. There's some stuff going on with you. I got to deal with it. Come on. I got to deal with it. Why? Because Jesus said Satan has no part in me. Come on, somebody. Satan has no part in me. So come on. You think you want to be like Jesus? I want to be just like Jesus. And Jesus it sees a little part of Satan inside of us. Come on. And he's not going to take it up. He's not going to cause deliverance. Oh my God, just lift your hands and give God glory. You know, we know we've lost, we've lost focus because we've, dis we've been distracted. The enemy tries to what? Speed us up or slow us down. He tries to speed us up or slow us down. Yeah. Come on, somebody. <laughs> Why? Because timing in the kingdom is critical. And if you notice, the time that you need timing is the time the enemy releases distractions. Where you need it the most, be, careful, be precautious. When you need to focus the most is when he begins to bombard. 
bombard our minds, imaginations, thoughts, all sorts of things. Why? Because once we lose, we miss that timing and it's past, he's like, <laughs> and guess what? If you notice, every time we lose timing, the distractions stop. When we miss our timing, guess what? You are no longer distracted. Why? Because he did his job. And he doesn't need to do anything in that season or maybe even the next season after that. Why? Because timing with God is everything. You notice when you're trying to focus, that's when the launches attack. That's when the enemy launches attacks. Spouse act up, children act up, the dog act up, the car act up. You got to fix the car all of a sudden. Come on, somebody. The car was working all along. Now you got to fix the car. This happened to me recently, y'all. AC, AC messed up. Y'all ain't hearing me. AC man told me how much it's going to cost. I said, what? I said, the devil is a liar. <laughs> I said, the devil is a liar. Do you know that when your back is against the wall, you learn how to do things real quick. Lift your hands and give God some glory. Give him some praise up in here, y'all. Let me tell you, I would I never did any AC work in the history of my life. God supernaturally caused me to call the right people. I got the part that was needed. Come on, somebody. I opened this thing up and saw wires everywhere. And I said, Jesus, help me. This is not my, oh, my shit ticket. I said, this is just not me. Y'all ain't hearing me. I saw wires everywhere. And I said, God, Lord, you need to step in right now. Come on. You ever ask the Lord, Lord, I need you to step in right now. And you should have saw me. I videotaped every wire I took off. <laughs> because if you put back the wrong wire in the wrong place, it ain't going to work. So you want to talk about focus? I didn't want nobody to bother me. I didn't want nobody opening the door. I didn't want the kids to bother me. I said, go inside. Daddy's doing something right now. Come on, somebody. And I had to stay focused. Why? Because if I miss one thing, that AC could trip up, explode, cause a fire, anything. Well, thank God we have breakers. If there's an issue, it'll break and come on. Come on, somebody. So listen to me, saints of God. The point is... <laughs> We can't be distracted. So after the AC breaks, my car starts tripping the next week. Do you know the enemy is very strategic? But we're not ignorant of the enemy's devices. How many know your faith says, get up and move forward? Get up and move forward. Why? You will lose momentum. You will lose momentum if you don't get up and move forward. You, you cannot wallow there. You cannot stay there. You cannot harbor there like a boat in the sea. Come on, harbor. You got to get up even though you don't understand. Some, how many know you got to move forward even frustrated? Come on, even move forward when you don't understand. Move forward and stop thinking about it. There are times where I said, you know, don't even think about it. Just do it. Don't think about it. Just do it. Come on. Don't even think about it, Pastor Roger. Just do it. And I took my time and I put that motor back in and I connected the wires and I went to, and I went to the switch and I said, Jesus, take the wheel. Hallelujah. Jesus, take the wheel. You know, you know how to pray y'all with things. <laughs> when your back is against the wall, you really know how to pray. I said, Lord, I'm about to put this thing on. Jesus, take the wheel. I put that thing on and it didn't come on. What it was doing, it, can't, it wasn't like the other motor. When I put the other older motor on, it would come on. <laughs> but there's a newer technology with the newer motors. It takes its time to come on. It goes Then it increases in power. I said, 
I put it on and said, Jesus, Lord, Father, the devil is a liar. Come on, somebody. And then I eventually heard it. Come on. I called the AC man. I said, sir, I, I mean, how does this motor work? And he explained to me, well, this, it gradually comes on and it gradually comes off. I said, thank you, Jesus. Come on, somebody. I said, thank you, Jesus. So now the point is, I had to keep my focus We've got to keep our focus. If you don't remember anything today, keep your focus. And if we lose focus like Peter did, remember what Peter did. He put his eyes back on the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, I, I'm going to dare to tell you this. Get your focus off of your assignment and get your focus on Jesus. This is for somebody. Your gift and your assignment will overwhelm you, but it won't overwhelm God because God is the one who gave you the gift. Get your focus off of your assignment and get your this was not even in my notes uh, the holy ghost just told me to say it so i'm just saying it get your focus off of your assignment whether you're an intercessor whether you're a pastor whether you're a prophet whether you're an evangelist whatever your assignment is in the earth get your focus off of that if you're focused on that you have lost your focus our focus is the lord jesus christ not our assignment, not our gift. Once we focus on the Lord Jesus Christ, it puts us in the right place in the realm of the spirit. It brings structure and order to every area of our lives. It even brings structure to the gifts in our lives. When we focus on the Lord Jesus Christ and not our gift, Character will be developed when we're focused on focusing on Jesus. Come on, somebody. I said character will be developed. Lift your hands and give God some praise. I feel the glory of the Lord in this place. I feel the glory of the Lord. Oh, my God. We don't want the enemy to cause us to act too soon or not soon enough. We don't want to move prematurely. We don't want to move too slow. We don't want to move too fast. That's why we cannot be focused either on our problems and our troubles. You ever saw somebody just focused on the rain and just kept their eyes on the, on the rain clouds? No one does that. Come on. We focus on the Lord Jesus Christ. We're focused on the sun because we know beyond the clouds, the sun is still shining. Why? Because above the sun, clouds do not exist. <laughs> Glory be to God. Hallelujah. I said above the clouds. As a matter of fact, even if it tried to exist, there's so much heat, it cannot, it, it can't even exist. So let's get our focus back on the sun, not the S-U-N, but the S-O-N, because we don't worship the S-U-N, we worship the S-O-N. Come on, somebody. We worship the creator, we don't worship the creation. Don't for I said this week. I lost focus. I said, Lord, you mean to tell me this woman selling conjuring candles? Get your focus. Get your focus right, Roger. That ain't your business. That ain't your business. I am God, and I'm going to deal with who I need to deal with at the right time. I said, you know, the other day, you know, sometimes we want judgment to be released. 
And God is like, if I release judgment, you're going to get it too. Y'all ain't hearing me. Why? Because there's something inside of me that deserved the judgment of God. But we thank God for grace. <laughs> so while we're thinking about, Lord, release your judgment, judgment on, on that person. Lord God, look what they did to me. Look what they're doing. And God is saying, if I release judgment, I'm a righteous, remember, I'm a righteous judge. I'm not a judicial judge in this court system. You can't lobby me in or lobby me out. I don't take lobbyist paychecks. You cannot go, my day, city. You can't pay me off. <laughs> For whatsoever a man soweth or woman, that shall he also reap. So I say, God, the mere fact that we're still alive is your grace and your mercy and your faithfulness towards us. My point is that it's not that I'm living a sinful life or, or you're living a sinful life. No, if we go based on God's standard, <laughs> we would all be in trouble. I'm, I'm going to close. I feel the glory of the Lord in this place. I feel the presence of the Lord in my atmosphere. I hope you feel this presence in your atmosphere. <laughs> Oh my God. Just worship him for a few moments. Just worship him. Just worship him. We worship you, God. We magnify you. Woo! We worship you because you are God and there is no one like you, God. Just worship him. Worship him because he is worthy to be praised. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. I saw in closing this gentleman, he was just analyzing a singer's ability and how she was able to sing. And while I was watching it, the Lord was talking to me. I said, look at this young man analyzing this singer. But this was not just an ordinary singer. She's a trailblazer. She's, a, she's one who has started this gospel movement and shifted it to a different place. And you know what the Lord told me? He said, even though he's analyzing her, look what God told me. He cannot analyze a standard. You can analyze a singer below the standard, but you cannot analyze a standard that put it in place. And God said, my word is a standard. And just like this young man, there are many people who are analyzing my word, not realizing that my word is the standard. It is the place to reach to. I said, good God Almighty. My word is the standard. And if we embrace, excuse me, if we reject the standard of God's word, we have embraced imaginations. We have, we have embraced clouds. You have embraced what exists to the eye, but is not tangible to the hand. <laughs> oh my God. Holy Spirit, have your way. We are shifting 
Our lives are shifting. Our church is shifting. Our lives are shifting to a different place. And whether we want it to go there or not, it's going to go there. Why? Because a perfect man's steps are ordered by the Lord. If you want out, you can come out. But once you've chosen the Lord Jesus Christ, <laughs> what we think does not matter. God wasn't even concerned with what Jesus was thinking. He, he said, let this cup pass. <laughs> and Jesus was like, you know what? Well, <laughs> he said, well, <laughs> moving on. Come on, somebody. Not my will. Oh, my God. But thy will be done. So Isaiah, Samuel, you might as well be a prophet. Shut your mouth. Be a prophet. Samson, shut your mouth. Just grow your hair. Grow your hair. That's my commandment. I'm going to use you to be a judge in this nation and to nations or, and surrounding nations. God could have used any young lady, but he chose Esther. So the mere fact that God chose me and chose you for an assignment that's bigger than what we can see. I'm going to be, I'm going to be honest with you. That testimony I heard this week, it blessed my heart. It really encouraged me. It encouraged me. Because when you think you're not doing anything, someone's being touched. My God, I'm blessed by your podcast, Pastor Roger. I'm blessed by what God is using you to do. Huh? We may never get, thank you, Evangelist Sidoni, because the other day you encouraged me. I was at the brink. We may never hear that. Thank you, Minister Channa, for choosing to pray and to intercede. We may never hear that. It was your prayer. It was you all coming together and interceding for people that you might not even know. Let's lift your hands. God is so good. I'm ending right here. I did my assignment today. And as you know, I'm speaking in front of hundreds or just two people. I'm going to give it my all. You know why? Because this is bigger than me. This is a divine assignment. And if I take the little for granted, I will also take the big for granted. You know what God is telling us? You're looking for the big and you're in the big. My God. You're, you're in the big. You are doing kingdom purpose. We're greater than, you don't understand. You're greater than a doctor. A doctor can only go but so far to help a person live. But if they die in their sins, they're going to experience a second death. According to Revelation, completely severed from God. You're better than a lawyer pleading a person's case because they, it, it can't nobody plead a case like Jesus. He's the greatest lawyer. He's the greatest advocate. <laughs> what? Some of y'all are nurses. A nurse can only go but so far, but once they hear that, a whip. God bless you. I did the best that I could. Mm. Doctors, come on in. Matter of fact, before that person even, vital signs are shifting, it's changing. You press the button. Doctors, get it here quickly. And guess what? It's only but so far. But now what we're talking about, the eternal position of a person's soul. We're about to mm. shift into YouTube, saints of God. Don't take anything for granted. Mm. 
Because someone's going to be blessed on YouTube. Someone's life is going to be changed uh, on social media. Somewhere, somehow. Mm. Oh, my God. My podcast is reaching people in India. I looked the other day in different parts of the world. I said, whoa. On Spotify and different places. When you think what you're doing is irrelevant. That's a lie from the enemy. Oh my God. I want you to say, ah, I want you to say, I rebuke every imagination, every thought. According to, I believe it's Second Chronicles, Corinthians, excuse me, I'm going to read it in a second. Every imagination, every thought, everything that exalts itself above the knowledge of the almighty God. Oh, my God. I rebuke it out of my life. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I'm going to end right here. I rebuke it out of my life. But saints of God, this week, (laughs) pray against everything that is hindering focus. We get our minds correct. Get our minds back on the Lord Jesus Christ. God bless you, saints of God. Have a blessed, blessed, peaceful day. Enjoy the day. Keep on loving Jesus. Because one day the trumpet is going to sound. Because if you lost focus, you're not going to focus on your oil. Your oil won't be full. My God. Don't be like the foolish virgins. Because there were some wise virgins. They said, no, I'm going to keep my oil high. Oh, hallelujah. I'm going to stay high in the spirit. I'm not going to disconnect from God. I'm going to stay in prayer and fasting. I'm going to stay in a worship, an attitude of worship. I'm not moving from my focus. Because I need... Oh my God, because how can God place new, fresh oil in old wine skin? Old ways of thinking, old ways of doing. Come on, come on. We've got to shift our mindset yes. and prepare for the new, fresh oil, the, the new anointing. Come on, that is being released because there's a new wave of anointing that's being released even now. God bless the saints of God.